What up? This is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment. And here's my review of Netflix new movie, Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. Let's rock this. Okay, so this was my most anticipated movie going into the recent Toronto International Film Festival 2022. Now, keep in mind that the previous first installment also premiered at TIFF a few years back. So it was special that Ryan Johnson brought Glass Onion to the same place, the same venue, the same event for its big debut. I'm a huge fan of the first movie, by the way. So yes, of course, I had expected that this follow-up would potentially be just as fun. But then I watched the whole film and... <sighs> Look, I'm gonna be alone on this and I'll take the heat. I don't mind being the only unpopular opinion in town. Some of you reacted to my social media reaction to Glass Onion by asking, Rama, did you see the same movie as everybody else? Because everybody else there gave it a massive praise. Well, forgive me if I'm not everybody else. I happen to have an independent thought of my own. Maybe other people like this movie and that's their prerogative, but to me, Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery is a big disappointment. It's irritating, it's shallow, it's tedious, it's average. With the exception of Daniel Craig, all of the new characters are annoying, and the whodunit mystery is not as clever as you think it is. This movie is the perfect example of why some things should be left just as a standalone. Not every single thing in the world needs a sequel, but of course Ryan Johnson is planning a third one since this is a franchise, so what the hell. Written and directed by Ryan Johnson in the follow-up to his previous hit movie Knives Out in Glass Onion, Detective Benoit Blanc travels to Greece to peel back the layers of a mystery involving a new cast of colorful suspects. Starring Daniel Craig, Edward Norton, Janelle Monet, Catherine Hahn, Leslie Odom Jr., Jessica Henwick, Madeline Klein, with Kate Hudson and Dave Bautista. So, to elaborate more on the plot, without spilling spoilers, obviously Daniel Craig is the only one who returns. He's the constant variable, if you will. But his reputation precedes him, meaning the new group of characters have heard of what Detective Benoit Blanc did with the Trombe family in Massachusetts. So anyway, Benoit gets invited to a private island owned by a billionaire who has concocted his own murder mystery game for his guests to solve. By guests, I mean people who are near and dear to him, even the one he has had falling out with. I think that's one of the things that bugs me about Glass Onion, in that the murder mystery is manufactured as an intended game. I mean, I get it. Ryan Johnson chose to tell the story this way, but to me, it kind of cheapens it and it takes the fun out of the element of happenstance. And again, without giving too much away, not all of the twists and turns in Glass Onion are smart. In fact, the biggest twist of them all is so lame and it's such a cop-out, it'll make you wonder, is that it? Is that the best you can do, Ryan? And on top of that, I'm not sure why Ryan feels the need to crank up the comedy, but he's trying way too hard. It's never a good sign when you're trying too hard to be funny. A lot of it misses the mark, and they become so cringy, you won't believe that those lines come out of their mouths. What's sad is that probably when Ryan wrote these jokes, he must have thought, Eureka, nailed it. Now, don't get me wrong, mystery-wise, the movie does start off pretty crafty with the big tricky boxes that everybody receives around the same time. That whole opening sequence with the divided screens showing them working together to crack the box open is absolutely great. But once they get to the island, that's when the screws loosen bit by bit. The story gets sillier and sillier with every passing scene and I don't mean that in a good way. And while it is interesting to see this collection of talented A-listers in the same room together, their characters' dynamics, however, are very weak, and their pretentious attitudes rub me the wrong way. It's like an awkward house party that turns into an intervention that devolves into a pointless mess. 
By that point, I hated every last one of them and just wanted the film to be over already. But that's the problem with sequels, isn't it? I mean, trying to recapture lightning in a bottle under pressure to top your previous success is easier said than done. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And in the case of Glass Onion, it only goes to show that the first Knives Out movie remains superior.